Every modification that I've done to this Stepside Silverado over the last six months has been preparing for today. Today is the day we're going to start the supercharging process of this truck and I cannot wait to get started. I just got everything unboxed. The parts look awesome and it's going to totally transform how this truck drives, how it sounds and how it looks under the hood. I've always wanted a supercharger and ever since I worked at Redshift back in like I think this was probably seven years ago. We had a Cadillac CTSV on the dyno. We did a bunch of work to it, you know, different cylinder heads, different camshaft, long tube headers. Um, I totally forget how much power it made on the dyno. It was really strong, I remember that. But the one thing that is kind of like burned into my memory is the sound that that supercharger made on the dyno. Just that kind of whining, the screaming sound. <laughs> You've probably heard one before, but today we're going to start the install so I can have that sound of my own on my Silverado. Now this build has been probably, no, oh, maybe six months in the making. I bought the truck back in August of last year. And one of the first things that I did was pull the engine out of the truck because it was like super leaky. Just about every gasket on this engine was puking oil out of it. But it was also a good opportunity to reinforce the bottom end because I knew we'd be forcing a bunch of air into it. I wasn't quite sure if I was gonna do a turbo or a supercharger, but obviously we're going a supercharger. But to help prepare the engine for that, you know, I installed some ARP head bolts, I installed some MLS head gaskets, it's got a different camshaft, different valve train, long tube headers, a full exhaust, which I just finally got dialed in to where I'm happy with it, which, <laughs> thanks for your patience on that, guys, because I know you hate seeing video after video of me welding exhaust, but... Um, it was a, prom, a, a process and I was bound and determined to be able to use a four inch tailpipe and I finally got it dialed in to where I want it. So now it's time to move on to the fun stuff. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we got the engine completely prepared for boost. And it's not necessarily something that you have to do because these you know, LS truck motors are fairly strong. So I could put the parts that you're about to see on whether or not I had done these upgrades. So don't think that it's necessary that you have to do that if you want to supercharge your truck but it's definitely good insurance if you're gonna go through the effort. Now, also I wanted to kind of bring back my little uh, 4.8 versus 8.1 shootout because that was kind of a great comparison to do. And we did the naturally aspirated version. This truck made 275 horsepower at the rear wheels. You know, we did a long tube, uh, the long tube headers, full exhaust, camshaft, valve train upgrades and so on. And that bumped us up by I forget what it was, another 60 horse or something like that. But anyway, um, the next stage of the build is comparing my turbo 8.1 at low to medium boost to this engine at a similar level. So my next benchmark of build is a goal of somewhere right around 480 to 500 horsepower at the wheels. And I think we have what it takes to make it happen. So first of all, I wanted to give a big shout out to the guys over at Boost District because they're the ones that sold me this kit and they have just about everything that you'll need to supercharge your LS powered or LT powered GM car or truck. If you've got a Silverado, if you've got a Corvette, a Camaro, you know, a Pontiac G8, a Chevy SS, whatever it is, if you want to supercharge it, check them out because they have all kinds of kits and just about everything that you would ever need. And they even have, you know, the accessories like different size pulleys and they build motors and they do all kinds of stuff. Um, but we got a complete supercharger kit for them. So let's jump right in and kind of go over all the parts. Now, of course, the central piece right here is the supercharger itself. This is a 100% brand new GM LSA supercharger. Now, uh, this is a ZL1 lid that comes from the Camaro version, which has the water outlets for the intercooler on the front side. Uh, the CTSV lid does have the outlets on the back side. And everything that I've read seems to think that the ZL1 lid does flow just a little bit better and offers a little bit better cooling. So that's awesome. And plus, I just kind of like how this looks compared to the uh, CTSV lid anyway. But the fuel line, I believe that is actually from a CTSV because it has the inlet on the driver's side here where I think the ZL1 fuel rail actually comes in on the uh, passenger side over here. So that'll make life a little bit easier because on the Gen 3 and Gen 4 trucks, the fuel line comes in right there on the driver's side. Now, the one thing you will notice is my year of truck has a return style of fuel system, which means I will have to get a regulator in there. Um, a lot of guys just do the Chevy Corvette style filter slash regulator, which you can make that work, but I don't really like how it looks. So I'll probably wind up going with like an aftermarket adjustable fuel pressure regulator with a gauge on it. Uh, just because uh, honestly, it's just kind of for looks and nothing more. But um, yeah, that's, I think what, that's the route I'm going to take there. 
Um, in terms of changes that they've made to the supercharger, like I said, this is all brand new, but they do press off the stock pulley and they install this aftermarket one. This is a grip tech pulley, which means it's going to help prevent belt slip and all that kind of stuff. It's a 2.55 inch upper. I'm not sure what the boost level this is going to put out with the truck balancer, but I do know I'm probably going to try to upgrade this to like a 245 or a 238 because, I mean, we want as much power as we can, and I've got the motor built to accept pretty much anything we can throw at it. So as long as we don't have belt slip, which we shouldn't, uh, we are going to be downsizing that at some point. Uh, we've also got a, I believe this is the brake booster line. It'll kind of go on there and go over to the, the vacuum booster on the firewall. The lid also comes with the uh, both map sensors. It comes with the uh, inlet air temp sensor. It comes with a little bypass valve and everything's already hooked up to go to get installed into the truck. In terms of wiring, there's a few adapters that they've got here. This one is going to go onto the map sensor, so you don't have to do any splicing if you don't want to. Um, it'll plug into the map sensor there and plug into the stock truck uh, wiring harness for the other side. It also has the little pigtail for the inlet air temp sensor once again, so that'll plug right in. Um, we've got a bunch of gaskets. We have gaskets for the adapter plate and we have gaskets for the uh, intake or the supercharger side. We've got the gasket for the heat exchanger. We've got a bunch of hardware right here. This is basically to convert the truck accessories that we have and to move everything out of the way. So this will reuse the alternator. It reuses the uh, power steering pump and maybe the idler. And, but it just kind of moves things out of the way because the LSA kind of comes down this way. And I think the alternator would be in the way. So they've got the adapter kit there. I also did order from them. I upgraded the injectors. These are FIC 850. So we'll have plenty of fuel flow to go with that. Um, they also provided the injector adapters down there. We have the, this is kind of key to making this conversion work because uh, the LSA supercharger uses a rectangle port head like the LS3 and the LSA, and I think there's one more. Uh, but anyway, the truck engines obviously use a cathedral port head in this year. So Boost District makes an aluminum adapter plate. You've got the nice machined O-ring grooves on the one side, and you've got the flat surface on the other for the supercharger to sit on, and it'll convert from that rectangle port down to the cathedral port. Like I said, you kind of, you need these or to switch cylinder heads, but I kind of, I like this idea. Uh, it's got the hardware for that. And then we have the stuff for the heat exchanger because um, on the bottom side of the lid, if I can pick this up one handed without dropping anything, um, you can see in there, that's the heat exchanger. So the air enters up from the supercharger there and it passes through the heat exchanger to be cooled off and liquid gets pumped through these fittings. And it goes through a low temp radiator that's gonna be installed in the front of the truck. So this is their upgraded heat exchanger. It's a little bit on the big side, but we're just gonna have to get a little creative in terms of how we mount it up there in the grill. But um, that's important to having a good running supercharged engine. We want to have as low inlet air temps as possible. And then we've got the reservoir and then we've got the fluid pump. This is the, what was the rating on this one? Uh, 23 liters per minute. Um, so that'll move quite a bit of water. And then we've got a wiring harness for that. So basically that is all the parts that we have from Boots District. That's their kit. And I cannot wait to get started on the installation. Now there are going to be a few things that I need to get on my own to finish the installation, just a couple of small odds and ends. Uh, the first one I kind of already mentioned, that's the fuel pressure regulator and just some way to connect the fuel lines up to the supercharger. Uh, and the next big one is going to be the air intake system. We got to have some filter and some sort of an intake tube. Uh, the LSA blower mounts the throttle body kind of off to the driver's side. But on the Silverado, they have the air filter mounted on the passenger side. And I have seen guys just kind of make like a 120 degree bend with a pipe that runs over here and they'll stick a filter somewhere in that corner, which would work. Um, the option I think I'd like to try would be actually mounting the filter over here on the driver's side. But to do that, we'd have to relocate the battery using like a Duramax battery tray so we can put it over there. Have to rerun a few battery cables. And then the only other thing I don't know right now is just where the accessory drive is going to fit and how much clearance we're going to have around like the upper radiator hose, the PCM mount, battery cables, and all that stuff. So I think aesthetically what I'd like is to have the filter over here, but depending on how much clearance we have, uh, it may wind up over there. So I'm not sure yet 
Uh, the only other thing, the most annoying thing that I'm going to have to build is a throttle cable bracket because, of course, uh, the Gen 4 LS is what the LSA supercharger came on. These were all drive-by wire, where my older Silverado is drive-by cable, as you just saw. Um, so we need some sort of a bracket. I'm not sure if I mentioned this already, but Motion Raceworks does have a really trick-looking billet bracket that goes between that bolt there and that bolt there. But from the pictures, they don't show it with the fuel rail installed. So I think, it, I, I could be wrong, but it looks like it would interfere with the fuel rail. So I'm not sure if I can buy that bracket or if I will have to build one of my own. Because if I can't use that hole, there is another hole on the top of the supercharger like that guy right there I could use. So we'll see how that works out. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you have a cable throttle body, you'll have to make some sort of a bracket. Um, you will need to get some hoses. I think just regular 5 8 inch heater hose like you can find at the parts store to connect your heat exchanger to the intercooler, to the pump, to the reservoir, and all that good stuff. Um, but I think for the most part, that's all that I'm going to have to get on my own to wrap up this kit. And the last thing I wanted to address, though, is why did I decide to go with a supercharger or a root style supercharger, for that matter, over the other options that are out there, you know, turbocharging or even a centrifugal supercharger. Um, a centrifugal supercharger, they're great, they're simple, uh, they don't make a lot of heat, but the only reason I didn't choose a centrifugal like a, a Pro Charger or a Vortec or a Torque Storm is because they have a linear boost curve that's linear with RPM. So down at the lower RPM ranges, you're not making a lot of boost. And yes, this is a high RPM engine, relatively, um, but it doesn't make a lot of torque down low. So I wanted to choose a power adder that would sort of help make up where this 4.8 is lacking, and that's the low to mid RPM range. Uh, so a centrifugal was out, although mechanically they are a great design. Uh, the next runner up, I think, in my mind was a turbocharger, and it was kind of almost a tie. But the, one of the reasons why I didn't want to go with a turbo is because I already have a turbo truck. Like the ugly truck, that's got a big S480 on it. And that's kind of like my quote unquote race truck. That's going to be built up to, you know, 1500 horsepower eventually. Um, and you can make a turbo streetable, you know, don't get me wrong. That wasn't necessarily that my thought process that a turbo truck is not streetable, but I wanted to have something with great response. I kind of wanted to try a supercharger to get rid of turbo lag um, and just, like I said, mainly try something different. Also, this is a sort of heavy vehicle compared to like a car. Um, it's going to be all-wheel drive, so I wanted as much hit or punch or boost or whatever right off the line. So that's kind of the thought process behind choosing a supercharger. And the LSA engines that these were bolted to were rated at like 550 or 580 horsepower, somewhere in there. Um, and we've got room to grow because we have a little bit, we've got some room left. We can go with a smaller pulley. Um, we can do porting on here. We can put a bigger throttle body on. And then if I get tired of this with the 4.8, like I can always install a different engine underneath the blower. Like I could put a 5.3 or a 6.0 or a 6.2 even. I could put, you know, I could find a, like an LS3 and I could do a 24X conversion on it and stick it in this truck. Um, or I could do like a 408 stroke or we could do all kinds of different things to make more power while still using this LSA blower because we've got a good solid foundation. This is brand new. These will last practically forever. We've got a good big heat exchanger. Um, I think I may have that core welded up just to kind of reinforce it a little bit and prevent any problems if we run a higher boost level. Um, but that's kind of my thought process, guys. I want to try something different. I want low end torque and I want the cool sound that that blower is going to make. So uh, come back next time. I think we're going to start the installation right away. I don't have anything planned ahead of this right now. So we'll get the truck torn down. We'll start to get things mounted up and there will be a few things we have to build. Like I said, the air intake, we'll get the intercooler mounted up front, but I'm so excited and I cannot wait to get this truck done. And my plan is right now, I want to get this thing down to LS Fest in April in Las Vegas. Um, we should have the all-wheel drive conversion done by then. We should have the supercharger done by then. And I can't wait to get this truck out on the track. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you again soon.